Welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, Humble Human on a Mission, here to help you both look and feel your absolute best. And in today's episode, we're going to be focusing on retinol for the summertime. I don't know about you, but I love the summer. I love getting sunshine on my entire body. And uh, just yesterday, I had just a glorious day at this outdoor cold plunge and sauna and getting sunshine and just being in nature. It was just fantastic. It's way better than going to the spa and, you know, getting this, that, and the other thing done. I just felt totally restored and rejuvenated. I love the sunshine. I'm not afraid of the sun. And here I am, you know, the skin person talking about the fact that I love sunshine on the body. But the weird thing is I don't burn anymore. Well, I mean, if I'm in the sun long enough, yes, I can kind of feel my skin burn, but I really don't burn. I was literally outside for most, like a good three hours outside and did not burn. What is that attributed to? That is attributed to keeping my oxidative stress status toxic, bucket as empty as possible. Hey, Emily, great to have you here. Shannon, Jackie, Christy, and those of you catching the replay, let me know your questions on a retinol. But when we keep this toxic bucket empty, what happens? We have less inflammation in our body and we're less likely to become inflamed after things like sun exposure. Really interesting. I didn't think it was possible to kind of get this sort of like sun protective quality from being super healthy. And I do want to mention something that I feel like really changed the game for me. And then we're going to get into retinol. And that is the Qualia Senolytic product. You probably heard me talk about the fact that I did this like week long fast in the desert at altitude and it totally changed my physiology. However, not all of us can really get into that because it takes a lot of time and you can't really do the same workload and workflow and caring for your family in the same way. I did it on a week-long camping trip. It was just absolutely magical. It felt kind of like biblical doing this fast. I was at this place in Sedona called Angel Valley for some of it, and it was just divine. And I just felt so good, so much mental clarity. But what happened afterwards was really interesting. My hair, skin, and nails really started to shift. And about six months before that is when I started to do more parasite cleansing and clearing out yeast, fungi, mold, heavy metals, and parasites. And just how my body felt was incredible. So if you want to get the benefits of doing a fast without doing a long fast, then what you can actually do is every 21 days, take something called a senolytic. And Qualia makes an incredible senolytic. I take it every 21 days, basically six capsules one day, day two, another six capsules. And then you just repeat that in 21 days, every 21 days. And you can get the Qualia senolytics over at qualialife.com forward slash radiance and use code radiance for 15% off of your purchase. And we want to get rid of these senescent cells. So kind of what does retinol do? Retinol is an antioxidant. Antioxidants gobble up sort of like what happens from oxidation. Antioxidants really love to bind to things to clear them out. And that's kind of what senolytics do is they sort of, it's like pruning the leaves off of a tree, if you will, so that the rest of the tree can produce beautiful fruit or for your body, produce clear skin. I would also beg to question that there might be a linkage for those of you tuning into this episode to kind of learn about you know, retinol and pore size refinement and fine lines and wrinkles and pigmentation and more collagen. When we are detoxed, I also feel like there's a linkage. Um, I've come across this in a few conversations. If you have a lot of pigmentation, so sunspots, age spots, melasma, it may be an underlying sign that your detoxification pathways are a little bit sluggish. Yes, sluggish, very interesting. So whatever we can do to detox and get that autophagy going with cold plunging and saunaing that's, and fasting, those trigger autophagy in the body, which is cellular repair and renewal. That's what that senolytic product does, which is um, really helpful and makes it easy to get that benefit without having to do a week-long fast in the desert at altitude while camping. Uh, it was quite the adventure, I must say. My life is full of adventures, but peace is also a high value of mine as well. Okay. 
What is retinol? It's a potent antioxidant, otherwise known as vitamin A. It's been on the market since the 90s. And y'all know I love it when products and also technologies have been on the market for at least six, seven, eight years, because I've always seen, you know, new products coming out. Oh, it's innovative or new technologies. Oh, it's going to make the skin better. And then what happens is once it's, you know, after it's been approved for use, it gets used on the general population. Then we really get a sense of how the general population responds. What are the outcomes? Does the product or technology need to get honed? Does the protocols for offering it also need to get honed? These take time. Retinol, since the 90s, has had lots of time to get honed. Now, the nuance here is how do we use retinol in the seasons? How do we use it in the summer in particular? Don't use your retinol the night before you know you're gonna be kicking it at the pool or at the beach or doing a long hike and spending lots of time outside or doing your gardening. Why? Retinol can make you photosensitive. Otherwise, meaning it can make you sensitive to the sun. Now, before even doing a retinol, what you wanna do is make sure that your skincare is, your skin is stabilized, your skin barrier is stabilized. How do we do that? A basic skincare routine, of cleansing the skin twice a day with the double cleanse in the PM, moisturizing twice a day to feed and nourish the skin, not just moisturize, but to feed it with antioxidants and different peptides that are in your moisturizers. And then your sunscreen. I prefer mineral only sunscreen using say zinc primarily. And then I have a really good tinted one that does have a bit of titanium in it. It gives a great color, mattifies the face, and also using a lip sunscreen, especially in the summer to protect the skin. And then of course, exfoliating two to five times a week. If you're not doing that, if you're not doing your cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen scrub, I don't want you to go near a retinol. I don't want you to go near dermal rolling. I don't even want you to do any in-clinic laser rejuvenation. Why? Because your skin is not yet stabilized. We want to whisper to the skin. We want to start communicating with the skin. Clear out the redness, the dryness, the irritation. Usually that's going to happen within about two weeks. And I've seen this in photography. When I've started a client on a basic routine at consultation, two weeks later, maybe see them in clinic for a hydrofacial or something else. And then in the photos, the photos don't lie. We see less redness and more dewiness, glassiness. And then the client also reports the skin feeling much better and feeling more hydrated. So it can happen really quick. And we might think, oh, I got these fine lines and wrinkles, and pigmentation. I'm just going to go straight to a retinol because I heard it was really good. Do not put the cart before the horse. Same thing with your health and with detoxing. Don't detox before you clean out the aquarium, before you empty out the toxic bucket by purifying your air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, eating the right foods, then detoxify. So it's interesting. We're kind of seeing these like parallels between caring for our body and caring for the largest organ of the body. Question from Shannon, tretinoin, retinol, vitamin A in a body cream, sunscreen every day. I actually love to use my retinols, which helps with cellular turnover. It speeds up the cell cycle as we age the skin cell cycle from the dermis deep in the skin to the superficial layers of the skin, which is where when you see it a month later, What's going on there is as we age, that skin cell cycle can slows down to 30 days plus. It, the skin cell cycle gets a little bit sluggish. So while the skin cells are moving in the skin from the deeper dermis layer, which getting all the nutrients to the top of the skin where you see it, the longer that cell cycle is, the more likelihood there is for damage of the skin cells itself and to see things like dryness, redness, irritation, and pigmentation. So the skin cycle gets sluggish. That's why we use retinol to speed it up, to get a cellular renewal happening faster. And in that process, it's called re-epithelialization. Yes, these are really big words. So what's happening is when you first start to use retinol on the face, the neck, the chest, the hands, the inner arms, the elbows, the knees, the lower part of the upper legs, like that knee part where the knee, the knee and the thigh meet, we can get some lines there. I love retinol all over the body. To answer your question, Shannon, but in a body cream, not really necessary. 
just a couple of nights a week, kind of switch between doing, you know, the knees, maybe the backs of the thighs, you know, one of the other evenings, put the retinol on your inner arms and your elbows, your inner elbow too. But in general, I want you to use your retinol face, neck, chest, and hands. You can add those other areas of the body. Absolutely. In the body oil that I have on my skin shop, it's an A, C, and E vitamin body oil. So the A is a bit of a retinol as well. And I love, love, love this body oil. So that's called the A, C, and E body oil on my skin shop, which does, yes, have a little bit of retinol in it. And sunscreen every day, you are throwing your money out the window. If you're doing anything skincare wise, retinol, peels, dermal rolling, lasers, non-surgical injectables, surgery, you're throwing your money out the window if you're not using sunscreen every day. Do I use sunscreen every day on my whole body, head to toe? No, absolutely not. But I do on the high real estate areas, like my face, eyelids, lips, neck, side of the neck, even back of the neck, the ears, the entire chest area, tops of the shoulders, and my hands, because those are the areas of the face that get quite a bit more sun exposure. These are our high real estate areas. These are the areas of the face that we show off. If you are doing a day at the beach or at the pool or gardening, I recommend if it's going to be prolonged periods, you actually cover up. And I even wear some SPF protective clothing often. Clothing is going to give you a degree of SPF protection. So if you don't want to show it off, cover it up. And then when you want to show it off, then, you know, show it off and your skin's going to be great. But I am intentional with how much skin I actually show off because I know that the sun is going to make an impact. So say, for example, if I'm wearing a sleeveless shirt, I'll go for like a longer skirt or pants. I don't rock that sleeveless shirt or like a tank top with a mini skirt. That's a lot of skin to show. And I'm also about, you know, the, the appearance or the aesthetic or our style. And that's a kind of a pretty good rule of thumb, FYI. Okay, Jackie, how to use retinol while not burning in the sun the next day. I don't want you to use your retinol the day before you know you're going to be getting a lot of sun exposure because retinol can make the skin more photosensitive. So you got to pick and choose. This is a first world problem. Oh, can I use my retinol tonight? Oh, I'm going to be outside a little bit more, living the life, enjoying the summertime. Don't use retinol that night before you're going to be outside enjoying the sunshine. These are great questions, by the way. So how do you use your retinol? I want you to use it on nights when you know you're not going to be getting a lot of sun exposure the next day. So you could maybe do like one of the gentle peels that I have on my skin shop, like the active peel system or the gel peel. There's three different strengths for that. We're going to get into strengths of retinol in just a sec as well. Those are going to be kind of gentle enough as well. But if your skin is a little sensitive, you've been rolling, doing your peels, doing your retinols, how I've showed you in my seasonal tutorials, how to use and how to integrate what's called skin cycling. I only really teach that in my tutorials. The show here is a little bit more of like an overview. The tutorials, I literally take you into my restroom and show you exactly how to use your products. I give you the how, the what, the why on the different products um, that you can use to get to have, have the best skin of your life. We also talk about hair care, dermal rolling. It's not really my style to do tutorials on YouTube for Bill Bub, Doug and Sally to maybe I use things incorrectly. So the only place I teach tutorials is in my tutorials. <laughs> and you can register for those at the school of I recommend everybody join at least one of my seasonal tutorials. And there is one happening right now, the summer tutorial. And don't delay, join now. And in seven weeks, I'm going to teach you how to become your own skin pro through expert tutorials. Okay, Shannon, I have had basal and squamous cell carcinoma. These are skin cancers. Skin cancer is very, very serious because skin cancers can start out as a skin cancer, but then they can also migrate and metastasize and impacts other areas of the bodies as well. I've seen skin cancer in the eye area actually become a lymphoma because it's gone into the lymphatic system. Um, I am, you know, a, a registered nurse. I'm also double board certified in 
uh, aesthetic nursing and I've been working in oculoplastic surgery, which is right at the top of the food chain for many years. And 10% of all skin cancers occur in this like belt around the eyes. So the brows, the eyelids, the top of the cheeks, the nose, this area gets so much sun. So we tend to see that there quite a bit, but it can happen at 10%. The whole body of skin cancers occurs around the eyes. That's pretty significant. This is a pretty small section of the face, but it just goes to show you that the cumulative effect of sun exposure does create an impact. Some people are going to be a little bit more prone to say skin cancers than others. Uh, that's going to be related to how much melanin you have in your skin and what your skin type is. I'm a Fitzpatrick two skin type. So I don't have a ton of melanin. And last year I actually did the melanotan peptide and I got very dark. And that was actually researched as a anti-skin cancer drug uh, decades ago, uh, but it's not approved on the market, but a derivative of melanotan is for libido function in men called PT-141. Peptides are becoming more and more popular. They're not new in skincare, by the way, um, especially practitioner grade skincare, like what I offer. Um, it's been utilized for decades. It's, it's not new to have peptides in skincare. So if you've had a skin cancer in the past, there's a likelihood you might get it again if you're not careful. If you're not diligent with your sun protection, if you continue to lead a sort of like high inflammation type of lifestyle, a toxic bucket's going to be full. What's the root cause of autoimmune conditions and cancers and other types of things and just aging in general? Lack of nutrients, eating a high anti-nutrient diet and inflammation. Obviously genes play a role as well, but our, our environment plays a massive role. Clean out the aquarium, right? Filter that water, filter that air, all of that is going to have an impact on your body's natural defense mechanisms against DNA mutation, which is essentially what cancer is. So if you have had a basal or squamous cell or skin cancer in the past, Shannon, you're going to want to be doing your yearly checks with your dermatologist and taking, keeping a close eye on areas of the skin. But in general, the lifestyle side of things are really key. And I kind of just breezed through what those are, um, the little points to take action in, which is air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and eating the right foods, and then detoxing. And what I do in a one-on-one -on -one session, which if you haven't had your one-on-one -on -one session yet, book it right away because my schedule is likely to be changing. And I'll walk you through what that would look like in a way that's going to work with your budget, your values, and your lifestyle, because it's different for everybody. Jackie, not all retinol types make you sensitive. This is a question. What makes people sensitive to retinol is something called the retinoid reaction phase. And if you haven't started to whisper to the skin and stabilize it with your skincare, like your cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen scrub, which I am so adamant about, because in those who I've worked with in the past who have red, dry, irritated, quote unquote, sensitive skin, they're usually missing out on one or two of those key pieces. And then we sort that out and then that skin sensitivity starts to reduce as well as reducing inflammation in general in the body and around you is also going to make an impact. So when you're starting retinol, you're starting it at say one or two nights a week. Okay, one or two nights a week. Before you go to bed, you're only using it in the PM. You wash your face, double cleanse. First cleanse is taking off your skincare and your makeup and you know, the dirt from the day. The second cleanse, which is why you want to wash your face back to back, is actually washing your skin. Rinse that off with fresh running water. Take a little um, darker sort of like face cloth hand towel. Go over your hairline, your jawline your lash line, take off any residual makeup, and then you're going to go to your eye cream. Then you're going to go to your retinol. Then you're going to go to your moisturizer and go to bed. You want to apply an eye cream before putting your retinol on to create a bit of a barrier around the eyes because 
if a retinol is used too close to the eyes, it's going to result in redness, dryness, irritation, and puffiness and stinging to the eyes. And sometimes this can happen on like the second day or the second night of using retinol in a row. You might think, oh, my skin's pretty tough. I can use that retinol around the eyes. I'll be fine. It's going to catch up with you. So if you do want to use retinol for the resurfacing and fine liner wrinkle benefit and the antioxidant benefit, use the retinol eye gel on my skin shop a couple of nights a week, but never use a standard retinol on your eyelids. Retinol on the face, neck, chest, hands, and some of those body areas where you can kind of like swap where you're going to do, because you don't want to have like too much retinol on the body too. Um, there could be a thing called retinol toxicity. I've, I have heard about that. So you don't just want to like slather retinol all over your body. You just want to be kind of keep targeting uh, with the exception of that ac &E body oil, which is actually meant for the whole body. But what's going to make the skin sensitive is that retinoid reaction phase, which can last about a month. Now, some companies out there, they like to tell aesthetic nurses like myself, oh, just tell your patient to push through that redness, dryness, and flakiness for a month, and then their skin's gonna be fantastic in a month. I have a big problem with that because nobody's gonna to wanna to walk around looking like a red lizard for a month. Not gonna happen. So simply integrating a gentle form, a mild form of retinol, one to two nights a week, and then once you're through that bottle, graduate up to the stronger concentration, once you're through that bottle, a couple months later, graduate to the stronger one. On my skin shop, I do have two different brands. Well, actually three, two different brands of, I'm going to talk about that one, retinol. And there's a mild, the medium, and the stronger version. You need to start with the mildest so that your skin can get used to retinol. And what's cool about the retinols that I have on my skin shop at theschoolofradiance.com is they're buffered with moisturizers and antioxidants and peptides to actually even help your skin overcome that retinoid reaction phase. If you just get a retinol that's say compounded from your doctor or from a compounding pharmacy, oftentimes the carrier cream has parabens in it and it's just not as clean as I would hope. And it doesn't have these other really sophisticated products like antioxidants, moisturizers and peptides to help support the skin through that retinoid reaction phase. So if you've used a retinol in the past and you've been sensitive to it, you probably didn't have your basic routine on point and you might've been offered a retinol that was a little bit too strong and you didn't say put a great moisturizer on over top, maybe you used it too close to the eyes as well. And just notice how the neck skin is after using a retinol sometimes the skin to the neck can get a little extra irritated so if you're noticing when you're starting to use retinol a couple nights a week that neck skin is getting a little irritated just back off and use the retinol a little less frequently on the skin what do you do if your skin gets red dry and irritated from retinols peels in clinic laser stuff dermal rolling extra sunshine what do you do you take a break from everything and you just lean into your basic routine until the skin has re-epithelialized, until the skin has built itself back up again. And then when the skin's feeling good, that's a good time to do the retinol appeal or dermal rolling. And in terms of, you know, coupling your retinols with in-clinic stuff, whether it's non-surgical injectables or lasers or surgery itself, you want to take a week off of retinol before doing anything, and then once the skin's healed, another week off after that. That's a pretty well-known kind of like timeline to avoid doing active things on the skin before and after doing things in the clinic. So when I've worked with clients who have had a lot of sensitivities from retinol, they're probably put on like a 1% right out of the gate and they didn't have the skin prep done ahead of time to whisper to the skin and you know just have those basics in place and also when they use that retinol they maybe didn't have a a really rich hydrating cream afterwards to help to soothe and mitigate what's experienced through that retinoid reaction phase so starting with a more mild um, concentration of vitamin A or retinol is really important. And then you slowly build up. 
Now the third retinol I have on my skin job, it is a 1%. In my tutorials, I teach you how to actually use that with another product for a once a month peel at home. It's actually a combination peel with retinol and antioxidants, and it's, it's fantastic at a fraction of the price. Uh, so that's something that I specifically talk about in my tutorials. Okay, Christy, thoughts on Elta MD Broad Spectrum UV Clear SPF 40. So glad you asked this question, Christy. Elta MD, it's a brand out there, and you know I don't like to put brands under the bus or, you know, talk negatively. However, Elta MD used to be a really good sunscreen line, and they only used mineral sunscreen filters. And then I'd probably say in about 2016, they started to use more chemical sunscreen filters like avobenzone and oxybenzone, not just the physical. So zinc and titanium, they started to use chemical filters, which those ones sting your eyes and they only last for one to three hours. They kill marine life. And there's also been connections with hormone disruption in the body. If something's killing marine life, it's probably not great for you. Um, so you won't see that brand on my skin shop for that reason. Also, I work with about 18 brands on my skin shop and I take the time to really determine what the superstars are in those brands and leave out the duds. Every line I've worked with since 2011, that's practitioner grade skincare, medical grade skincare, which has higher levels of actives and is going to be more likely to do the job for mature skin needs, as opposed to something you get at the drugstore or CBS or Sephora, which still has like vitamin C, A, E, hyaluronic acid peptides, but that final formulation just might not be quite as potent and as stable and likely isn't really going to meet the needs of mature skin. That's kind of what I've noticed is the biggest difference between over-the-counter and more practitioner-grade stuff is just really the result. And you don't have to break the bank. I have lots of great products at various different price points for you to choose from. That's always been important for me. Jackie, if you are always in the sun during the day, should you use a growth serum instead? This is a good question because there's different serums that have come on the market over the last few years that are using different uh, growth serums and stem cells and exosomes and peptides and all sorts of things. And there was, there is one line in particular that does have a growth, well, there's two that have growth factor serums. One of them I just flat out don't like. When it first came out, it just smelled horrific. It smelled like a really bad women's washroom. It just smelled horrendous. And where they were actually getting the growth factors from was from, trigger warning, human foreskin donations. And then those growth factors were replicated from that sample. Not very appetizing, is it? And so typically we want to be getting growth factors like epsosomes and stem cells from yourself, right? So this is homologous. This is from you. So all these people talking about getting stem cells and they can be from donors. And I have sat on meetings with these different companies in the labs that actually process these stem cells from the donor. They have a very rigorous, a very rigorous selection. They will not accept a stem cell donation from someone who has taken a certain medications over the last few years and they are just very strict with who actually can donate stem cells to then be used in uh, clinics and products and things like that. So, so th the labs that are creating these stem cell products, they're adhering to really strict policies, but some are going to be better than others. The one that I sat in on, um, I could tell that they were doing a really good job of um, making sure that who's receiving these stem cells are getting really high quality stem cells because they've had the opportunity to prevent everyone who's a potential donor. But the best donor is actually always going to be yourself. And stem cells are going to be derived from either fat or bone marrow, which is why this is often coupled with, say, like liposuction to the inner arms 
or the abdomen, and then fat transfer, fat transfer to the face has also be, it's been very popular over the years too. The stem cells can get taken from your fat or through a needle um, into your, your hip bone, into the bone marrow. It's a very painful procedure. I have seen this done in person and uh, it's, it's pretty painful, but those are going to be the two best sources because they're from you. They're homologous, but you're going to hear a lot more about stem cells over the next five, 10 years. I think where we're at with stem cells now is where Botox was in the nineties, uh, which is exciting. I think there's going to be some great innovations with this. So growth factor serums. I do have one on my skin shop. You just need to make sure that, you know, again, it's a good formulation. It's at a good price point. It's not breaking the bank. If you have specific questions about growth factor serums, growth factor serums and things like that, Jackie, just send me an email, info at theschoolofradiance.com. But it really depends on what you're wanting to focus on. So you've heard a podcast, you've seen an ad on social media, and you've heard about this word or this product you should be using. But it really comes down to what are your skin goals. If your skin goals are acne, acne scarring, large pores, fine lines, wrinkles, skin sagging, hyperpigmentation, there's going to be different ways to overcome those things. And it's also going to depend on what's going on with you in particular, how old you are, What's your skin type? What's your skin quality? What are your other concerns that are kind of coinciding those things that I just listed? Skin dryness, skin redness, irritation, flaking, oiliness. So there's a lot of nuances between, you know, how to create basically a routine and product recommendations. It's not just, oh, I want to use this product. Well, why do you want to use that product? What's the underlying skin goal that you're wanting to overcome? And retinol is fantastic. Um, thank you. I was thinking the Zeo Growth Factor. Yeah, I do have that one on my skin shop. Um, that, one, that one's actually a really lovely one. Um, out of all the growth factors that I've trialed, that one I have seen changes in, in a month. Um, actually, pretty great changes. So that's why that one is on my skin shop, which is great. And so I think your question was kind of like, okay, well, I want, you know, my skin to be better. Should I use a growth factor serum instead of a retinol? I still think retinol, if you have mature skin needs are going to be like a good staple to have and do to get that cellular renewal wake up happening. Because as we age, the skin cell cycle becomes more sluggish, it slows down, and that's what vitamin A, that's what retinol does. Now, there's different forms of retinol as well. You're going to hear retinol, O-L, retinoic acid, so oic acid, and you're going to hear retinaldehyde. And so what these different endings of the word retinol mean are the different functional groups, and this is Going back to my Gen Chem Organic Chem and Biochem days, very happy that I did uh, my med school prerequisites back in the day, wrote the MCAT, applied to medical school, and uh, figured I'd try my hand at nursepreneurship and research and teaching instead. I'm glad I did. Um, but there's always a part of me that, you know, I feel like I would have made a really, really good doctor. You never know. Maybe that's something that I'll end up doing down the line. Never too old to... to uh, teach an old dog new tricks, if you will. But that information is really helpful for me to kind of share with you that there's different forms of retinol out there and they do kind of different things. So it just depends on really what your primary skin goals are, what your needs are. That's why the one-on-one -on -one is so helpful with me. And I've been offering one-on-one -on -one since about 2017. I don't know if you know this, but I started to offer the remote online one-on-one -on -one sessions over, you know, first it was Skype, then it was Zoom because, you know, me, this 20 something year old nurse on Vancouver Island, I had lots of clients flying to see me from across the globe, France, Germany, Dubai, New York, California, Toronto, all over the place. And so I needed a way to kind of stay connected and talk about things before and after and what what's always been really different about me 
is I take the time with my clients, whether it's in clinic or online, to really provide a very comprehensive consultation for skincare, for skin rejuvenation. And then, of course, online, we can talk about the lifestyle, the biohacking, and the slowing aging solutions, well, options to promote more support. Um, in that capacity. So that's really why I built out the online sessions. And then it just, you know, kind of took off. So if you've heard of, you know, clinics doing virtual skin consults, it's a pretty safe bet that I was one of the first to be doing that, which is pretty neat. Saw the writings on the wall that, you know, that online stuff on Zoom was going to be taken off in a couple of years. And sure enough, a couple of years later, people, were, everybody was on Zoom for like two years and uh, here I was talking to people in a back room on a computer and nobody knew what I was doing. <laughs> uh, so things are always kind of evolving and, and it's interesting seeing where the trends are going. So I've mentioned things like peptides and I mentioned things like stem cells. We're going to start to see more med spas integrating more of the longevity practices. We really are actually seeing quite a bit of that, especially in places like Dubai, uh, Germany, in the south of the United States. We're seeing more and more med spas integrating the, uh, the sort of like the lifestyle and the, the longevity side of things, hormones and weight loss and peptides and all these things. And I'm really excited to see where the med spa industry is going in the next couple of years. And if you are a practitioner, head on over to buildingyourbeautybrand.com and book a time to connect with my colleague, Christine I, who's a med spa marketing agency owner, and we'll give you some tips on how to show up online. That's over at buildingyourbeautybrand.com. If you are a med spa practitioner, like say, for example, an aesthetic nurse, just like me. I would love to connect with you. So find a time and date that works for you. All right. Are there any other questions about retinol that I haven't covered? I feel like I've covered just about everything, but I'm warmly going to pause here and see if any of you who are here live have some questions about retinol. I've answered them all. These were really great questions that you brought. And I do want to emphasize that I don't think everything is good for everybody. And in fact, I feel like it's really unethical to actually say that because I have had clients in the past who just, you know, they just don't do well with retinol. And do I think retinol is an important staple to have in everyone's routine? I don't. However, what retinol will do is it's going to speed up that cell turnover. It's going to add that fine line and pore size refinement, a little, a little bit of help with pigmentation, and it's going to help the skin cells become younger because we're speeding up the skin cell turnover. But there's nuances with integrating retinol into your routine. Don't do it when you feel like your skin is dry or sensitive. Take a break, lean into your basic routine. Don't add retinols into the routine until your basic skincare protocol is set in place and your skin is stabilized for at least two weeks. Really important. So whisper to the skin for two weeks with your basic routine. Start to do some, say, dermal rolling serums like copper peptide, vitamin C. Um, the two dermal rolling serums that I recommend for dermal rolling only use those for dermal rolling. That's the copper peptide and the soluble C. You're not going to want to use those during the day. They don't have the same slip and glide as the other vitamin C serums that I have. Just use those in the evening, two nights a week for a couple of weeks, then do your dermal rolling. Your retinol, you're going to be using sort of in between on the evenings when you're not doing dermal rolling. And same with the peels. You're going to be doing a peel maybe once or twice a week. Uh, when you say don't want to do a retinol or you don't have time to do dermal rolling, that's when you could say do a peel. But this whole skin cycle cycling topic, I spend well over an hour actually talking about this in my tutorials and they're always live. So join the fun over at the school of radiance.com and join my tutorial that's happening now. And you're going to become your own skin pro in seven weeks by learning exactly how 
to use your products, how to apply them, and how to really maximize your time and energy with your self-care. This is important. You are worth it. Aging is a privilege. Aging well and slowing aging is not an accident. There's a lot of really great practices and products that we can use today that are backed by research, including the Senolytics that I mentioned. And again, in case you missed that, that's the Qualia Life Senolytics from qualialife.com forward slash radiance and use code radiance for 15% off. That's part of my every 21 day protocol to clear out the weeds or prune off the leaves that need to go that are draining energy. That's what autophagy, cellular renewal, and things like senolytics can do. They can help to trigger those things. And of course, this is not medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, do seek the guidance of a licensed physician, especially if you have the history of basal cell or squamous cell carcinoma, like Shannon. And I would also say that that extends into precancerous lesions, like actinic keratoses. If there's things happening on the skin, you want to be really conscious of the fact that things could be happening internally as well. The skin is our largest organ, and it tells us so much about what is going on on the inside, which is why I find studying the skin so remarkable because if the insides are under stress, you're gonna see that present through irritation to the eyes, through irritation to the scalp, through irritation to the skin. You're gonna see the visible signs of inflammation after it started to happen on the inside. All right, perfect. Shannon says, thank you, Rachel. You're very welcome. My absolute pleasure to answer your questions live. And for those of you tuning into the School of Radiance podcast, I love you all so much. Thanks so much for being here and also supporting me uh, when you purchase products, book a one-on-one, -on -one, join my tutorials, join my membership for the cherry on top with presentation. You know, you are really help helping support me. And I just, I'm, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you all taking the time to, you know, give back and at the same time, get great products and great knowledge on how to use your products uh, as well. Jackie, have a beautiful day. Thank you. My pleasure to serve you all here and I'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast. Learn more over at theschoolofradiance.com and there's also a special link in the description if you just want to have a quick chat and, um, and then I can figure out sort of like which ways are going to be helpful for you to get started with working with me as well. All right. Love you all so much. Have a great day. See you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.